Hi, in this video I would like to extend the control methodology that we introduced in the previous videos from regulation to tracking. That means instead of state variables I will consider outputs. And instead of trying to bring them close to zero I will try to bring them close to the reference values. I can reformulate this task by introducing regulation error denoted E. And then I want to bring the regulation error close to zero if not exactly to zero. In the case of linear systems, the outputs will be defined as linear combinations of states and the inputs, and here we will assume that there is no direct feeds through. Therefore, the regulation error is then, equal, uh, is then expressed as the difference between r and c times x, and this is what I would like to bring to zero. Now, it may seem at first that the situation is pretty straightforward here. I will simply formulate the standard uh, quadratic criterion, starting with the term penalizing the situation at the final time. Of course, this uh, will always have to be done at every sampling period. So, just replacing the state with the regulation error in the optimization criterion. And that, perhaps, that this will be it. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The situation is, is, is not as simple as that. Why? Well, it's simply because that uh, your desire is to see in a steady state the regulation error equal to zero. But at the same moment, you can't have the control equal to zero in general tracking situation. But then, in optimization, if the regulation error is equal to zero, these terms must vanish, whereas this guy will not vanish. But now, the optimization is not aware of your problem, so what it will do is, it is that it will try to bring the term corresponding to control close to zero, and the terms corresponding to the regulation error, it will drive away from zero. That means, with this control scheme, you will not be able to have zero error at steady state. What's the solution? The solution is to use uh, the increment of control signal instead of the control signal itself in your model. The control increment is defined as UK minus UK minus 1. That means the value of the control signal minus the value of the control signal in the previous time step. And now if I reformulate this, I can express my control signal at time k as the control signal at the previous time step plus the increment. Now, the increment is regarded as the new control signal, whereas the value of the control in the previous time step is our new state variable. So let's now incorporate this new state variable in our state space model. We will have to augment it. So instead of the original state vector x, I will now have uh, the, the, new, the new vector will be augmented with the state vector x with, sub, with the upper index u, which will stand for the value of control in the previous time step. And similarly, instead of uh, the original input u, I will have just delta u as my new control input. Alright, now uh, filling in the matrices here is pretty straightforward. As you can uh, verify by yourself. And now I will label the new augmented state vector as x tilde, and this will be new state matrix A tilde and B tilde. So remember that whatever has tilde here relates to the augmented system. All right, and now with this new model, I will, with this new state vector, I will express the output uh, in the following way. Again, the C tilde matrix, and now with this new state space model, I will write down the optimization cost uh, as, again, the term corresponding to the regulation error in the final time. And plus, plus the so-called running costs. That, mean, that means costs uh, between the initial and final time. Now, plus the term corresponding to the increment of u. It can't fit here, so I'll move it on the new line. Oops, I 
forgot to add the delta term. I will correct it later. So now let's uh, factor out the terms here. Now you, you don't have to be worried your loudspeaker is still functional. It's just that there's not much I can I can add here. Yeah, and finally, finally, uh, the, the running cost. Perhaps time for a little snack. Yeah, the term that is quadratic in X and finally the term that is quadratic in the new control here I correctly have deltas here so that's it I will also correct it up there all right so the usual the usual procedure then was to cancel the constant terms, uh, the terms that only contain the references here. Of course, it then gives a new cost function, which I should have uh, labeled differently. But, well, if you tolerate this abuse of notation, I, I will keep uh, labeling this cost function just as J. And now I will reformulate this cost function using those long stacked vectors which contain the values of the corresponding variables over all time instances over the whole interval. So R now stands for the long vector R with, with references, X tilde is a long vector with the augmented states and similarly for, for delta use and X T is of course the value of the state at the beginning of our horizon. Now I can rewrite the cost function in this format of long vectors as, uh, as this. So here I will have the term that corresponds to, to squared x tilde. Then I will have a term that will be that that is linear in x li, linear in x tilde. And finally, the term that is quadratic in controls or actually in the increments of uh, the control signal. Now. Uh, this is actually the cost function that means uh, I will want to minimize this subject to the following constraints and now the format of the constraints is pretty much identical to what you have seen in the previous videos it's just that here instead of x we, we have x tilde instead of u we have delta u and so on but other than that the structure is identical So for later convenience, let's label these matrices with their own names. Perhaps I will use uh, double bar to indicate that the matrices belong to, to the tracking problem. So Q double bar, T double bar, R double bar, A double bar, B double bar, and this could be perhaps, say, a double bar zero. And in fact, that's it. Uh, we are now almost almost ready to to call a solver for for quadratic programming. We have formulated the we have formulated our, op our optimal control problem in the so-called simultaneous format. Simultaneous because we have both x tilde and delta u. However, you know that it's actually a pretty good idea to, to eliminate the state variables using the state equations and express the whole optimization purely as an optimization over delta u's. Uh, 
All right, so now let's uh, go for it. The, again, the the relationship that we will use to eliminate the x tilde is pretty much identical in structure to to the relationship relation that you have seen in the previous videos. It's only that uh, now I will have double bar matrices C double bar and uh, A double hat. That, uh, matrices that relate x double bar, uh, x tilde, and uh, the increment in U and the augmented state at the beginning of the horizon. All right, so now I will take this uh, expression for x tilde and substitute it into the cost function. So instead uh, of x tilde, I will have I will have the following term here. Q double bar, and again the term corresponding to to x tilde. And then I will have the term that corresponds to 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 uh, the increment in control. And finally, the cross product here. And now this will really be just a matter of one or two lines of uh, straightforward but tedious derivation. You will also, you may also want to ignore the constant terms because they add nothing. So with the common abuse of notation, I will just keep using the same letter G for the cost function. And let me now show you the outcome. So what we will arrive at is the expression for the cost function which uh, contains the term that is quadratic in delta u and the term that is linear in delta u. And the structure of this expression is already very much familiar, right? By labeling the, the, the two matrices as h double bar and f double bar I can now write the cost function in this compact form. So the quadratic term and now the linear term, which is also parameterized by the value of the augmented state. Yeah, now f matrix should actually be, uh, should actually have be, be transposed. And I forgot to include double bar up there. Anyway, uh, by differentiating this cost function with respect to uh, to delta u, this is what I obtain. That means a function that is linear, linear in uh, delta u, and this should be equal to zero. So, in absence of constraints, I will find my optimal sequence of delta u's by solving a set of linear equations. If there are some constraints, inequality type constraints, for instance, bounds on the control signal, which is now part of the augmented state vector, and bounds on the state variables themselves, well, we will then use the following expression relation between x tilde and delta u's and simply formulate standard uh, QP problem with linear constraints. Now, one issue, pretty practical one, that I would like to discuss is the capability of an MPC uh, tracker to to behave uh, in an anticipatory way or actually to provide so-called preview capability. So let me consider the following scenario. I find myself or the controller finds itself at time t, discrete time t, so this is what we will regard as the presence, this is the current moment. And uh, then the considered uh, shape of a reference signal looks like this. Now, although in MPC we are doing optimization over some uh, window, some horizon, uh, the value of uh, the reference signal is only known at the current moment, so we do not know that two steps later there will be a step. Therefore, 
the resulting behavior of uh, of of this system the evolution of the output will look like this it will not it will, it will only start responding those two steps later at my current time instant i cannot do anything about it i simply do not know that i, I do not know that there will be a step or jump two sampling periods away there could be another situation another scenario again this is now this is the presence and with the same profile of the reference signal and again doing the optimization over some finite window in this case the controller is aware of the future shape of the of the reference signal please let me explain that this is not really fortune telling it's just that the controller was provided the the, the information about what is planned what is intended but then the controller can actually start doing something about the future requirements uh, already now and then the response could look like something like this or perhaps perhaps better something like like this so this is what's meant anticipatory uh, capability or preview control Now, uh, how is this reflected into the optimization? So in the situation where I do not know the future shape of control, I cannot do anything else than just fill in the long vector R with the same values as I got as I had at the current moment. Whereas in the situation on the right, I will fill them just with the exact values of the reference signal. 